Around a year ago, I reviewed the Samsung HWQ800T, and I was left pretty impressed. But now we've got its successor, the HWQ800A. Now, throughout this review, we'll be comparing the two soundbars and indeed seeing if the new model is worth its price tag. Because in the UK, it can be found for roughly £600, while in the US, it can be found for roughly $850. So, jumping straight in, we're going to talk about its aesthetics, and here it hasn't changed over its predecessor. But indeed, why should it? Because it's pretty faultless. Its slim profile means it'll fit in pretty much every sort of TV setup. Of course, you can wall mount it, but in my case, I've got a cabinet and it fits pretty well with my 55 inch television. Now, elsewhere, the soundbar has a metal grill that stems at the top and the front of the soundbar, making it quite handy in order for you not to accidentally poke its drivers. And at the side, it's covered with these plastic inserts. We'll touch upon the sideward firing drivers or the lack of them further down in this review. Focusing at the front of the soundbar, it's also great to see that sound. Samsung has preserved its LED indicator, which is forward facing rather than top facing, which is something that you can find in some of the manufacturer's flagship products. This makes it handy to see what settings you're adjusting on the fly. And of course, after you've adjusted it, the LED indicator will dim out altogether. Now, what I don't like, however, is the fact that there is touch sensitive buttons found at the top of the soundbar, which does mean that accidental presses can be occurrent. This is a non issue for myself, but if you have pets, for example, or indeed kids, it might be a little bit cumbersome. Now, of course, if you do want to adjust your settings on the fly, you can use the wireless remote. It's very sleek and has got a nice sort of design, but does omit a certain amount of features, which we're going to touch upon in the app section. Speaking of which, through the app, you can select the sources where you can see exactly what is playing. You can adjust the volume on the fly and equally when you're adjusting via the remote, it will work in real time. And you can switch between the sound mode, standard, surround, game and adaptive sound as you would find on the remote. Now, as for the equalizer, very much like on the remote, you can adjust the bass and treble. And equally, you can also change the woofer levels. However, what is a little bit odd is the fact that the advanced sound settings, so for example, the voice enhancement is available through the app and also through the remote, whereas the bass enhancement and the night mode are only available through the app, which just seems a little bit counterintuitive. Equally, via the remote, you can adjust the center and the front channels, whereas through the app, you've only got the bass and treble adjustments. Some similar sort of behavior that I notice in the Q700A. Now, at the top right hand side, you can also go to the device settings where you can check your network status, Bluetooth pairing mode, and also adjust the lip sync delay, whereby I had no issues whatsoever in terms of its default configuration. And then you've got Alexa and also Spotify settings, and you can also check for firmware directly. Directly through the information tab. So, with the inclusion of the app, it's no surprise that the soundbar does have Wi Fi support and indeed has Alexa built in, should you want to use it. Now, I should also mention over here it's got AirPlay 2 support, which is handy for iOS users, although it's slightly surprising not to see Chromecast, which it could come via firmware updates later in the future. Although, given the time of the review and also how long the soundbar has actually been on sale, it seems that's somewhat unlikely. And yes, before you ask, I did check for firmware updates. Prior to filming this review, and indeed, here I do not have Chromecast built in, which isn't the same thing that could be said about, let's say, the HWQ700A, which does now have Chromecast and AirPlay support thanks to a later firmware update. So, continuing on with wireless connectivity, this does also have Bluetooth, although it's limited to the lowest quality SBC codec. So, you'll probably want to resort to this if you're not doing any sort of critical listening. Now, for you to attain the best sort of sound quality from the soundbar, you're going to want to plug it in. And here, of course, you've got optical and HDMI to choose from, the latter being the better out of the two. And you've also got HDMI ARC and eARC support. Now, eARC is definitely appreciated and definitely bettered over the ARC support, specifically if you're listening to Dolby Atmos or DTSX content, because you get uncompressed metadata. But suffice to say, if you are not consuming that data, or for example, watching movies that have that sort of metadata support, then don't be afraid because you can still have ARC support, and therefore it's definitely backwards compatible. Something I thought to highlight because it's a comment that I've normally seen throughout my videos and it's just something I just wanted to clarify in this review. So with all of that said and done, I should just quickly mention the configuration of the soundbar. It's got eight speakers in total and you've also got an eight inch subwoofer. Combined, they output 330 watts and it gives you a 3.1.2 channel configuration. 
Now over its predecessor, you can also add rear speakers, which do also have upward firing drivers and therefore potentially bolstering the overall cinematic experience. We'll touch upon this further down in this review, but note I do not have the rear speakers to test. Also, I should mention that the soundbar has got upward and forward facing drivers only and does not have sideward facing drivers, which again will hinder the overall surround sound experience and we'll touch upon this in the soundstage department of this review. So without further ado, let's get on to an audio demo. First off, I'll be playing Priya J's track, which is titled Falling, and I'll be going through the different modes. In other words, adaptive, surround, game pro, and also the standard modes. Check out the annotations down below for you to understand which mode it's running on. Furthermore, I'll also be going on a piece to camera, whereby I'll be presenting the Jaguar I-Pace on Totally EV, and do check out that review in case you're interested on the channel. And here I'll be going through the voice enhancement feature and enabling it and disabling it. And this will further go into my comments of the mid-range department of the soundbar. I think it does exactly what it says on the tin. If you do want this on the standard level trim, you'll have to pay around £410. And what I do like around this area is the fact that Jaguar has integrated a multi-functional rotary dials, both for the passenger side and the driver side. It allows you to adjust the fan speed. So I appreciate an audio demo over YouTube and furthermore using my microphones is never ideal. So let's get onto my subjective opinion. First off, in terms of the sub bass response, I must say I'm pretty impressed. I have no issues whatsoever and it's pretty much exactly identical to the HWQ800T, whereby the sub bass extends to a roughly around 35 hertz, which will definitely suffice for a lot of consumers. Of course, it won't compete with hi-fi setups or more expensive soundbars out there on Martic, specifically ones from JBL, but nevertheless over here, the HWQ800A does certainly suffice in this department and so much so that I actually reduced the woofer level by three notches. Now as for the mid bass, it's pretty punchy but also concise. It's precise in the respect whereby the quality is there and furthermore the quantity is there. At least for my room's acoustics, I had no issues whatsoever, so much so that I even reduced the bass notch by two, very much identical that I did with the Q800T as well. All I'll say over here is that if you're consuming, let's say, R&B, D&B, EDM music, or indeed watching movies, then I think you'll be left with a smile on your face, given the subwoofer inclusion. And I should note over here that in comparison to the HWQ700A, the Q800A or the Q800T, both have a bigger subwoofer and therefore produce a slightly better pronounced low end bass, be it in the sub bass or mid bass departments. Now as for the mids, they are slightly recessed and pushed back, very much like the Q800T, whereby here that even if I was adjusting the center or forward channels or indeed enabling the voice function, I was just left a little bit unimpressed. Now don't get me wrong, if you do adjust the center and forward channels, you will get a bit more of a forward sound and therefore it does positively affect the mid range, but at the compromise of the overall accuracy. So therefore when you're listening back to let's say Priya's track, the artist's voice just does sound a little bit off. Now as for the voice enhancement feature, I wasn't left as impressed as I was when I did the review of the HWQ700A, which did make a massive difference when I was enabling or disabling this feature. 
Here, as you might have noted in my piece, the camera on Totally EV, the differences between the voice wasn't that pronounced. And exactly in my own hearing profile, I just didn't feel that it was making a massive difference. And still here was affecting the rest of the sound frequency range. So as a result, I just left that completely disabled and just accepted that the Q800A, very much like the Q800T, has a somewhat V-shaped sound signature. So to round off the sound frequency range, I should talk about the highs and here I've got no issues whatsoever. You can adjust one or two notches to the treble EQ, but going past that might give you a bit of ear fatigue, whereby you'll get a bit of sibilance and harshness. At least in my case, my ears tail off at around 16 to 17 kilohertz, which isn't bad for someone who's around 30 years old. Nevertheless, over here, the forward-facing tweeters do a good job and will definitely keep you excited, no matter what sort of media that you are consuming. So now we get onto the sound stage, and here I'll be giving you a little bit of an audio demo before getting into my subjective opinion and here I'll be using Transformers Age of Extinction and do check out the annotations down below. It might be pretty obvious nevertheless, but I'll be going between a PCM and a Dolby Atmos signal. <laughs> So you might have been able to pick up that the differences in terms of volume between Dolby Atmos and PCM were definitely noticeable, at least to my ears. And here, of course, the increased metadata will give you a better cinematic experience. The same could be said if you were watching regular terrestrial TV and you're going between HD, in other words, Dolby Digital, and going to a non-HD channel. So for example, if you're using a certain channel that has both HD and non-HD, you will notice that the PCM input just doesn't sound as fulfilling or indeed as loud. Now, loudness aside, here the metadata is definitely appreciated. Dolby Atmos and DTSX will definitely give you a better cinematic experience. However, it should be noted here that the Q800A, very much like the Q800T, does not have any sideward facing drivers. And as a result, doesn't give you the same sort of room filling or cinematic experience as you would get of more expensive soundbars out there on the market. So if you're really wanting that Dolby Atmos or DTSX experience and you want to get it to the best of your ability, then I would suggest saving up more or indeed just spending more on the more expensive Samsung soundbars or indeed ones that are offered from JBL or even Creative with the SX5 carrier, which is fantastic for a compact Dolby Atmos setup. Now before jumping onto my verdict, I do want to quickly highlight the differences between the Q800A and the Q800T in case you were arming and ahhing between the two. Now the Q800A, as I did mention before, before, has the optional rear speakers that now have upward firing drivers that for giving you a better room filling experience. But aside from the optional extras, the soundbar itself also has space fit technology, which in other words is room calibration. Now alas, I was not able to use this because I don't have a newer Samsung television. And indeed over here, you're gonna have to have a new Samsung television for you to benefit from the room calibration feature, which is only present in the Q800A and therefore not in the Q800T. Now very much like its sibling, it does still have the Q-Symphony feature, which yet again, you do need a newer Samsung television, which allows you to use the built-in TV speakers alongside the sound Bar, in other words, to give you a little bit more of a room filling experience. Now elsewhere, you do also have a potentially redundant feature and that's for a tap to sound. In other words, you would tap your smartphone on the soundbar. You'll be able to play directly what you were listening to on your smartphone. I can't see many people using this, but nevertheless, it is there as for you to use and wasn't present on the Q800T. So with all of that information that you've hopefully soaked out throughout this review, what do I make of the Q800A? Well, suffice to say, very much like the Q800T, it is a really good mid-range soundbar from the manufacturer. And at this price point, it's hard to think of other alternatives, of course, other than its sibling, the Q800T. 
but at the time of filming, that's actually being discontinued, so it might be quite hard to find. So as a result, this soundbar is now the successor and indeed the worthy successor to the Q800T and therefore still gets my Best Buy award. Now I'd be intrigued to hear your thoughts in a comment section below and as to what you make of the soundbar or other alternatives out there on the market. Now if you've liked this independent detailed review, definitely do drop a like, subscribe and hit that bell notification as it allows me to continue delivering this detailed content to you for you to consume. Alright, I've been totally dubbed and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves and goodbye.